la 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 screen peeking bop 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 hey everybody welcome to episode 35 of screen peeking a weekly podcast where ziggy and i get to talk about video games and anything video game related on today's show we're going to be well i'll be giving my uh, impressions of resident evil 8 and uh ziggy will be talking about some game builder garage apex legends legacy and a few other things so Without further ado, let's just jump right into the beginning of our show. Every week we start with how we've been doing and what we've been playing. So Ziggy, how are you doing? What have you been playing? <laughs> <laughs> I've been pretty good, yeah. Not much to report this week. Not much has changed. Other than the fact that, unexpectedly, I had no idea it was even coming, but like two months ago I ordered my Retroid Pocket 2, which I'll talk about later. Um, but this sort of emulation handheld that I'm very excited about to tinker with and fuck around with... Um, but outside of that, I mean, I've been playing more near still. I finally have all the weapons. I got one of the endings. Now I have to replay, replay the game again for ending D. And then I get to start a new save and then play it up to a certain point for ending E. And yeah, it's fun. It's, it's kind of a fucking chore <laughs> at this point. Um, but I'm getting through it to the good stuff. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Apex, which I'll talk about in a bit. Mm -hmm. Um and uh just on this which again i'll talk about later but i started playing earthbound for maybe the third time and i'll say i'm playing i'm finishing earthbound for the first time i mean i've started that game three or four times at this point <laughs> right and never i think i've gotten past on it once um but now that i am playing it on a platform that i actually like because before i i think i've tried playing it on my computer but i've stated multiple times in the show that i hate playing rpgs on my computer so i did not get very far um that's I fair. tried on my Android phone, just on an emulator, and I hated it just because touchscreen controls. And then I tried again on my mm -hmm. iPhone for some reason and still hated it. Um, but yeah, now that I'm finally in it, I'm enjoying it, having a good time. <laughs> Probably more to report. I'm actually past the point that I don't just have like bad association with from playing on shitty platforms. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for what I've been playing. Uh, what about you? Yeah, um, I I wanted to finish uh, uh, Earthbound as well. <laughs> I've started that a few times. Um, for me, I've just been playing um, some Horizon Zero Dawn. Lots of it, actually, not some. Uh, <laughs> gosh, probably put in since... I got like two hours on Sunday last week, and other than that, between then and now, I think I've probably put in at least 20 hours. <laughs> because uh, i had a day off in between there Dang, and yeah that, that probably put it up like 12 <laughs> um it i've been really enjoying that game um way more That's than awesome. i expected i've also been playing uh resident evil 8 of course i played that for about three hours yesterday which obviously we'll be talking about that today on the show um but before we go into that i definitely want to like give a bit of a spotlight to horizon because that is a game obviously so released back 2017 like shortly after Breath of the Wild, got compared to Breath of the Wild a lot. I don't know why. Mm. I personally feel like it's more comparable to an Assassin's Creed than a Breath of the Wild. Um, and when I say Assassin's Creed, I'm talking like Origins or Odyssey, one of the, like the newer, more RPG-based ones. Um, a lot of similarities with those. Uh, I'm just blown away by how fun this combat is in this game. I watched videos i watched trailers um i loved the idea of it's almost like cave people and tribes people but it's set still in the future and when they find like a watch they're like oh i wonder what they what the you know the ancient people they ever used these for it was probably for some mm -hmm. ritual or they're talking about like m ceramic mugs and like that must have been for some like special ceremony they wouldn't just drink out of that or you know stuff mm -hmm. like that it's just really funny hearing them talk about the ancient civilizations that are now basically and uh, mm -hmm. i thought that world sounded so cool but when I would watch gameplay of just crawling, you know, sneaking through the grass, basically hitting your checklist of items, I just thought that uh, it didn't look extremely fun to fight enemies either, doing like 10, 11 damage, like little chip damage over and over again to like these bigger enemies and constantly having to get out of the way. Didn't look fun to me, but holy cow, I was wrong. This thing is so fun to play and uh, <laughs> it's so rewarding just to take down almost anything. And the fact that you can really like optimize your different bows to do tear damage which is optimal for ripping parts off of enemies or you can you know focus on adding fire mods so that your fire arrows do a lot more fire damage which is great against enemies weak to fire or exploding canisters that are on enemies you can light a bunch on fire in a, in a group you can really like plan your attack place traps down 
you can yeah ambush and then just try your luck at using your spear which is your melee weapon you have a light attack a heavy attack and you can level up get skill points put those down in your skill tree and this is the probably the only yeah, i'm going to go out and say this is the only rpg or only video game that i've actually had a skill tree that made me it difficult for me to choose where i wanted mm -hmm. to go um, every other game I've been, I would look through the nodes and go, okay, I can tell this is more my play style, or this is more going to be useful for what I want to do. Every skill tree or every like path down this tree is so useful. There's paths for, cause like, it's so hard to get your health back in this game. Um, if you're not just running around collecting items, so you can basically make it so you collect twice as much stuff when you're, when you're mm -hmm. collecting and that's great. And you can also store up to like double the amount as before. So you're basically storing four health bars worth of medicine um you can unlock stealth attacks which are basically one hit kills on weaker enemies and like a lot of damage to the tougher enemies or you can unlock slow slow time for your bow which is obviously critical if you're trying to hit weak points so like yeah. the trade-off is crazy and then also you know um hacking enemies so that they you take them over they become on your side for a temporary amount of time you can get to the point where they're permanently on your side until they die um, and like that's a choice that down a different path or you can uh, make it so that you can call a mount if you get to the bottom of another tree that's focused on hacking enemies and maybe normally you'd have to have one of these mounts that you would have to, if you wanted to call it you'd have to have one you already hacked but this one would just summon one for you no matter what mm -hmm. like that's useful for just getting around the environment so there's a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of variety but a lot of choices that you pretty much don't feel like you're making a bad choice with almost any of the nodes which I find is really rare um mm -hmm. and and it doesn't have anything that is actually no there are a couple of just you get percentage of extra damage with your spear but a lot of but almost that's maybe two or three out of like i don't know 40 or something like that like there's a lot of options here and there's only a couple that are actually like here's an, a damage boost the rest are more like now you have a higher chance of your spear to knock uh plates of armor off of enemies when you hit them with your spear instead of it just being a damage buff so I don't know. I'm just like, I don't want to talk about it too, too long, but this game is a lot of fun for me and a lot of fun just like working on what kind of builds I want to go for. If I want to focus on a sniper kind of bow or if I want to focus on something that's a little bit more going to exploit the enemy's weaknesses. And I just fought, I think, I think it's the biggest one. I haven't seen all the robots in this game, but it said it's the apex predator and it's like a T-Rex and it has freaking missiles, miss, missiles, <laughs> missiles, missile launchers like on its back and it shoots lasers out of its mouth. It has other laser guns on the side of its head. And it, this thing has like Jesus. a whole like artillery, uh, a bunch of options to just blow you up basically. And uh, the only way I was able to defeat it was that it was distracted by trying to kill other things shot its big Ooh. gun off of its back, picked up the gun, and just started blasting into the thing. And oh, uh, and then cool. still, though, I had to like run away like crazy and try to place traps when I got out of sight so that when it comes to chase me down, it'd blow up. It's things like that, mm -hmm. that you're just kind of, this thing's cool and new, and I don't know how to best kill it yet. And uh, yeah, I just think it's really cool. Very creative game. And it's 100% gotten me way, way more excited for the sequel. That's supposed to come out this That's year. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's been, honestly, it was hard to pull me away to play Resident Evil 8 <laughs> because I was so into that game. And don't get me wrong. It's a good feeling, yeah. I wanted to play Resident Evil 8, but I, uh, yeah, I've been really having a fun time with that. Yeah, no, it's always a good feeling. Also, kind of a bad feeling, though, when, like, there's one game that you are really excited for, and then something comes along beforehand that, like, totally throws it off. <laughs> like that, yeah. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be a lot of more of me playing this game. And I don't think That's I'll good. fall off of it like I did with The Witcher. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, let's go right into our uh, second Extinction Impressions. We played that as our Game Club game from last week. Um, I gave it about an hour myself. Uh, Z Zig, how much time do you get to put towards it, do you think? Oh, probably less than an hour i couldn't say for sure i did the training and then attempted the first mission and then realized that this game is not meant to be played single player no it's not <laughs> and then <laughs> and then got fucking pounded and went oh, i'll look for someone to play with and i didn't find someone to play with so i stopped there yeah if anyone wonders why we don't play games together it's not that we don't want to 
but I always wake up at like four in the morning, even on days off. And so I'm like falling asleep by the time Ziggy's ready to start playing video games usually. Yeah. So our schedules just never line up. But anyways, yeah. for anyone who wonders that, like, well, why didn't you guys just play it together? Also, it's... I just, I secretly hate you. I, I just don't mm-hmm. want to touch you with mm-hmm. the 10-foot pole. I mean, it makes but, sense. you know, other, other than that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I hate myself too. <laughs> just kidding. You make that real Jesus. sad. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for myself, uh, and I played this back on, I want to say Monday, and then of course, like, a bunch of hours of Horizon since then, a, a few hours of Resident Evil. I'm like trying to remember exactly what I did, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I remember it was just, you fly down on your little pod, you hit the planet, you're basically supposed to be in a squad of like, what, three or four? I and four, yeah. You choose a class. I chose the, um, uh, it was the... One girl who can like she basically has this dash or this dodge, like where she like oh, leap I, forward. I chose her too. Yeah. Okay. The the sort of like the the bigger like Russian lady, right? No, no. Very like cartoonish Russian accent. Oh, and mine was like a not a big, not the bigger like machine gun wielding. Oh yeah, person. I mean she she wasn't big, but she was. I mean big oh. meaning like jacked as fuck. Oh and yeah. Very Russian, yeah. Maybe it was cartoonish action movie character. I can't remember, but I, but yeah, I played as her ability was to like kind of do a like a a burst forward or backward or wherever you're going, and uh, mm-hmm. had like an assault an assault rifle, and I felt like the the if the animations were fine, I felt like the uh, the game it was a game, you know, it's it's a game, and they know what they're doing. <laughs> they're, you have your objectives, you have your enemies, there's different types of enemies. I love it when enemies are, feel different, so I do feel like that was cool. You have your enemies that have some armor, these electric kind of ones, ones that turn invisible, right? And uh, that's the kind, that's really the only ones I really encountered was a lot of that. And then some bigger nests that you can kind of destroy. Um, but uh, for me, I felt like the the hit like i don't know what it was a hit scan bullets or like where you'd aim down your sight and i felt like the bullets would just not go where you're pointing constantly mm. um mm. yeah I, I don't know if you had that problem did, did you notice that at all not really i don't think i was aiming down sights virtually ever in mm. this game though to be honest just because it's so frantic i never felt like that was the right thing to do um but yeah i mean i i think for me, I yeah, I, I quite liked it, to be honest. I, I do actually want to find people to play this with because, um, for me, yeah, like, the shooting, the guns felt really good. That, that assault rifle felt punchy. The shotgun had a lot of weight. <laughs> I like that when... Because, yeah, I mean, for those who don't know, this is basically Dinosaur Left for Dead. Yeah, that's the easiest way thousand to describe percent. it. Um, and so, like, the shotgun, I like it. It just shreds the dinosaurs, like the little <laughs> like raptors. It's just like one shot, like it's. And there's some real fun like viscera effects in this game too, um, mm-hmm. and so yeah, they felt super punchy and powerful, which is good from guns. You want them to feel like they're actually doing something, um, and yeah, like the enemy variety felt really good, and the way that they placed it, where even though I was getting stomped on, um, literally in <laughs> in what I'm about to describe, where there was uh, I forget what they're called, but. You know, the, the big dinosaurs with, like, the big sort of spiky tails. Um, Stegosaurus? No, they're they're different. Similar but different. Oh, um, oh it's like the ones it like... one the, of those. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. It's like almost like an armored back, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know um, what the name is. Yeah. <laughs> Nine-year-old no, Nick would know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's, like, one of those and just a bunch of raptors. And he's, like, you know, a big tanky guy. You had to, like get him to charge into something so he'd flip over and like attack his belly for mm. to like actually do damage on it and so it was really frantic and fun you know there's just a million raptors swarming you right. and i'm trying to mow them down as this big guy just comes barely in like oh shit having to dodge out of the way of that <laughs> it was just like really fun trying to keep track of everything all that um it was definitely i wish they balanced it so it was possible to play single player like mm, yeah yeah totally. they would just change the amount of enemies in the environment based on how many players there were you know like destiny or something i think that would be a lot better um but i mean like this it, it's just it's just not meant to be played single player which is fine like there's totally nothing wrong with that um but yeah i mean from what i played which was very limited i would absolutely be down to play more it's it fits in the perfect amount of just like schlock and cheesiness of a good <laughs> action movie with you know genuinely good gameplay to back it up 
yeah, I, I like the... I could totally picture having a squad together. Just having fun yelling stuff to each other. Oh, shit, this guy's over here! Oh, no, it's one of these ones! You know, you're, you're yelling, you're just shooting, and there's mist of blood everywhere, and you're all just mm -hmm. having a good time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I like the game, um, but I, I, I think I definitely... Yeah, like I, like you said, it's not meant to be played solo. I, I got wrecked mm -hmm. constantly, like, over and over again, which was fine. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I kept trying because I liked the game. So, yeah, there's a. Uh, that's that's about all I have to say on it, myself. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. I'd give it one thumbs up, mm -hmm. maybe two if I was playing with a friend. About three friends. Different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a friend probably wouldn't be enough. I was just Anyways. gonna say four thumbs up. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I um, use my toes. I think. Yeah, so I'll just jump right into, I guess, my um, my impressions of Resident Evil 8. Um, so first off, this is what I was talking about last week, um, where I was saying I was going to be playing this with my wife, Taylor. Um, kind of just got everything hooked up just right, got a mic ready for her. She's just using basically this, this little, this little headset mic part. So it's not like the best quality, but it's nice because she doesn't have to hold the other one. I don't have another mic arm, so otherwise she'd have to be holding the thing, and this way I could just have her hold the, the have the headphones kind of on her neck and just have the mic by her mouth. And mm -hmm. uh, and I love playing horror games with her. It's so much fun, and uh, I just like playing games with her, period, but she's more just into horror, and that's about it. Not not huge into games. Um, she'll play the occasional one. And uh, yeah, so we started that yesterday in the evening, played about three hours, got into the castle played through the bit of the village got into the castle and a little bit further into that and uh don't worry i won't spoil anything for anyone who cares um purely just going to be saying like basic basic stuff that shouldn't be spoilery at all um it's not scary for me now mm -hmm. if it scares people that's totally fine like not judging anyone at all for myself as being someone as someone who's like played through Outlast, played through Dead Space, played through all these other games, I'm pretty desensitized to a lot of the stuff. I'm also more scared of slightly off human things like mannequins and people who are just slightly like morphed in a weird way that kind of creep me out or I can't quite identify, but it looks like a human. Um, mm -hmm. That stuff creeps me out a lot more than uh, monsters. So, of course the werewolf like and vampire kind of vibe that this game is giving is uh not as terrifying and in my opinion bloodborne is scarier already <laughs> so mm -hmm. and i don't even find bloodborne scary really so um I'm, I'm just putting it out there for anyone who's like into horror stuff you've probably seen enough horror to find this not scary so far mm -hmm. first three hours of the game so um yeah the, the just the atmosphere didn't even have that feeling of tension for myself um, Taylor, on the other hand, though, as someone who has watched a lot of horror movies, hasn't played many horror games, there's I, I'm editing a, about a 20 minute video of our first couple hours of the gameplay, and it'll be up very soon. And uh, yeah, she she gets jump scared about, or she gets scared about three different times where she screams at the top of her lungs, and it's hilarious. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, so yeah, like definitely still scary for people. Um, but I would say it's all jump scares so far for her. Like every single time it's been something out of the side of your screen when you're looking down a tunnel or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, which, whatever. It's it's a one way of doing it, I guess. I just feel like it's not say... as... It's not... It's a little bit of cheat. And it didn't get me. It was kind of... Oh, there's, <laughs> there's a thing. Taylor's screen probably scared me more than the game. <laughs> Do you think they're on par with, like... Because I thought RE7's jump scares, which is, I mean, for full disclosure, the only RE game I've played um, on a significant level. But because those, I thought, were used infrequently enough and well enough placed that I... Because I'm same, similar. I usually think jump scares are kind of cheap. They're not my favorite. But I actually really enjoy them in RE7. Do you think they're on par with that? Or do you think they're not as good? I feel like RE7 did a better and... Again, I can't remember the one like any in particular in RE7 right now. I know I got scared and I froze up and I type, you know, or you mm -hmm. tense up and you jump lots of times throughout Resident Evil 7. Um and I feel like it could be the atmosphere 
and that it like set this feeling this feeling of like oh i don't like it we've talked about it on the show before that feeling of i'm in the baker's house i shouldn't be in this person's house and that food mm-hmm. looks disgusting why is there grubs all through that throughout that there's blood over here why is this lady sitting in a chair just staring at me that she's not talking like this feeling of like uneasy but when you're in this village that is i don't know you're in this village and uh if there's these werewolf kind of people and you're just like yeah you're a monster and you're just walking towards me slowly just like a zombie and they're just kind of growling it's not going to be scary if one comes up behind you because you're already ready for for that um for Mm -hmm. jump scares it's literally been and i'm going to think about this before i say but like it hasn't been anything that i wasn't expecting and you'll even see in one of the clips i go okay i think this is what's going to happen and then we go for it and then Taylor screams so loud, <laughs> but but I still say it before, like, okay, this is when it's going to happen, and then it happens, right? It was slightly off, so I think she just started to get her, like, okay, it's not happening now, and then it happens. So, um, mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, there's at least two off the top of my head that I'm thinking about that were both, and you would 100% go, okay, it's going to be a jump scare right here. Oh, it's going to be a jump scare here as well. So I feel like that, I don't know if I felt that way with Resident Evil 7, I know that um, a lot of feelings was just being uncomfortable and not really feeling like I belong. Whereas this game maybe gives me more of a feeling of, oh, I want to explore. This is a really interesting place. Like it's just a bunch of buildings and we're outside and it's daylight. And now going into the castle, it is close quarter. It is like closed off. And I've been chased twice in this place. But um, I haven't found either part scary yet. And even Taylor didn't find them creepy. This, those parts creepy. So I don't know. Just just on a scare level, I'm going to say the game is not as scary as Resident Evil Seven, um, and that is my definitive fact. <laughs> I mm-hmm. I don't expect it to scare me, but I'm not only playing it to be scared. So I am. We'll put that aside now. Gameplay wise, um, it feels the combat feels just like RE Seven, um, mm. which. For better or for worse i personally feel like it's for worse i wish there was a even just even if it was only going backwards a bit of like a doom boost backward like take a step back get get a bit of distance i i get they're probably doing that for tension but for me it's more just annoying i don't find mm-hmm. it as, i don't find it scary or stressful it's more just oh come on like get get out of my face for a second here there's no and there's or just give me a way to punch them and get them shove them back right why do i have to be holding my gun up here next to my face because this guy's chest is in my face you'll see again in one of the clips from from my video that'll come out there's a point where they just they have like three of these wolf werewolf guys up in my face i'm crouched in a corner i can't move anywhere and they're both pushing into me and all i see is their abs and they're sl- they're attacking but they're not hitting me <laughs> and i'm like what am i doing i have no ammo so i'm like taking my knife and i'm just kind of slicing it <laughs> their their stomachs <laughs> eventually they do an attack that gets me but it's like you just sit there for about five seconds like what is happening here can i just like push you so i can try running around it would just kind of keep the action going so i don't know mm-hmm. that's that's my only uh complaint when it comes to the combat um i know some people like it but for me i feel the guns don't even feel that impactful you like it just doesn't feel good to have combat in that game like slicing it makes a, a light, light sound effect that doesn't feel like you're really doing anything. Um, there's more impact when you break the boxes, but like when you shoot an enemy in the head, I feel like it should feel like, bam, I, even if it doesn't kill them, it should feel like you got a good hit in there. Whereas it makes this weird, mm. like small splat sound. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it, but it, it sounds like you're shooting a paintball gun at this guy. <laughs> And I just feel like it kind of takes away the uh, the feeling of like impact from shooting these guys. Um, that's just a, the feeling I get. And I know I'm sounding very negative here, but I feel like it's worth pointing out because I think um, these are things that I would have complained about in RE7, but it was the first time they did a first-person RE game, right? So mm-hmm. I was like, that's fine. This is like a first go at it. Now it's the second go at it, and it's a lot quite a bit the same as re7 i feel like it should have been improved in a few ways there Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean to touch on that though because um i would argue because i actually really quite liked the combat in seven 
And I do think a lot of what you are describing in terms of what you didn't like is just sort of survival horror conventions, I would say. And survival horror conventions that, in my opinion, are there for a reason, where it's all, it is all about disempowerment and making you feel like every enemy is dangerous as hell. And I think a big part of that is the fact that, yeah, you can't push them away from, you can't dodge, you can't do these things. Like, you are sort of stuck and grounded and do, like, your things kind of have to, like, have your gun, like, mm-hmm. ah, like that feeling of you're too close to claustrophobia. Um, and for me, in, at least in RE7, I, I can't speak for 8, obviously, I haven't played it, but that, that did really work for me. Um, so, I don't know, like, if, if if I did enjoy the combat in 7, do you think I would enjoy the combat in 8? Yeah, totally. Um, because it's basically the same thing. I my <laughs> argument though with that is that I think it does work for RE seven better than it does for eight because mm. and you'll see this all around the place now that I've uh, seen like little blurbs. I haven't read anyone's full reviews, but I think it seems um, obviously nothing's universal. But it seems like the most people are thinking this game is a lot more action focused than seven, mm. and it's true. I have a note here. Ammo and health are plentiful. And I'm playing on normal difficulty. And I have so much ammo compared to 7. Where you're just like, you're struggling to have a full clip. This game I had like, in the first 20 minutes of having my gun, I think I had like 38 bullets or something like that. And you're just like, just unloading into these guys. (laughs) Like, you're aiming for the head. But if you don't hit, you don't really care. Because you're not really running out of ammo. And they're dropping Mm -hmm. items. And like, that's another thing. They're dropping items. So like before zig like i don't even know if the enemies dropped items before in seven i don't think they did but if they did there wasn't that many enemies these are like you're fighting maybe four or five six of them at a time and so you're just down in them getting a bunch of money you can i haven't upgraded any weapons yet but there is a shop guy that i've met and um i feel like just because of how much they're pushing you into combat situations and fighting i do think that it does warrant them adding some new moves new things you can do not just keeping it the same as a survival horror because i don't feel like it feels as survival you know i feel like it's more of a i feel the sense of exploration more in this one whereas seven was just like i need to find the exit and i need to get out of here this one i don't feel like i'm trying to get out of anywhere i feel like i'm just like okay i'm heading to something you know i'm looking for so and so and I want to get there and I want to find this person. So I am going after something. And so it's a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more like you're making the choice to do stuff instead of you being put in a situation that you can't get out of. So I feel like mm-hmm. that that really pushes the, the feeling I get with that whole combat situation. Because I've never complained about it again before when I was playing RE7. And I think it is that feeling. Mm-hmm. And, th- and I think you're right with it works great for survival horror. I just don't think that that's what this is. That, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, because, I mean, this game definitely seems like it's inspired a lot by RE4. And RE4 did have, like, the roundhouse kick, where you could kind of, you know, push enemies back and create that distance, and you were more <laughs> empowered in what you were doing. And also, yeah, I think you were saving the president's daughter or whatever in that game. Like, it, it was more of a empowered... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you had initiative in that game. It wasn't mm-hmm. like RE2 or RE7, where you are in a place you're stuck in that place and you're just trying to escape um mm-hmm. so yeah i i think that's actually a pretty fair criticism that the the game the survival horror gameplay just isn't translating to a less survival horror game exactly um but yeah that's a i think that's about it other than just one funny note i have here i'm just like i wrote i was like can i just say man ethan's hands just get fucked in these games if he survives <laughs> this one and they have him in the next game i suggest he has a robotic arms <laughs> because <laughs> it's so true dude if, if you play re8 and i don't worry i won't spoil but one two three definitely three off the top of my head situations where that left hand that you know stuff happens to the that hand in the first one Two things happen to the left hand. One really bad thing happens to the right hand. And you're just like, dude, just like get some replacement arms or something to get something that's like <laughs> robotic. Because like, yeah, there's, a, <laughs> there's some bad situations that happen to him. And I'm like, I don't know how you're getting out of this one because there's none of this mold stuff to, <laughs> or magic or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't seem like yeah. I'm getting, it's getting solved anytime soon. But it did, yeah. it did get a reaction out of me for sure. So 
Um, like in in seven, yeah, <laughs> in seven it was like funny. The yeah. levels where it would go where his arm would get like cut off, and you're like, ah, fuck it. You just kind of like Staples. put it back and put some like <laughs> hydrogen peroxide or whatever on it, and be like, yeah, it's fine, and keep going. Yeah, God, yeah. Poor Ethan, man. Yeah, He's been through some shit. I would. Yeah, and, and and it's worse, like I said, and and it's all within the first little bit. I'm like, I have probably have a lot more to go. I don't know what else you can do. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I'm very curious to see what happens now with my right hand uh, going forward into the game because I kind of stopped playing right after something happened. So very excited about that. I'll be later tonight. Um, but yeah, that's about it for my impressions. I'm I'm having a good time with it. So overall, good time. So much fun to play this with Taylor. I'm having a blast. And uh, yeah, when you see the clips, they're going to be popping up on my channel here. Um, t Taylor didn't want to be on video. Totally fair. I'm not going to force her to do that. Um, but if you're ever wondering, that is why. <laughs> but we have her voice in there. And uh, he, maybe if uh, enough people want her to reveal herself, she will. But I'm definitely not going to force her to do that. Because I'm just having a fun time playing through with her. So Awesome. Yeah, let's uh, move right into uh, the next topic here. Uh, if you want to take this one away. Uh, yeah, so uh, I forget when this came out. It looks like it was May 5th. So was that three days ago? Um, as of recording, Nintendo revealed Game Builder Garage, which came out of like really just kind of came out of nowhere but this is one of the most exciting announcements they've had for me at least in a really long time um so you're putting it here essentially what it looks like is sort of nintendo's answer to something like dreams um but in a way that to me feels almost more similar to like game maker studio um in that it's it's this really cool like you're seeing here sort of they're super fucking charming just like god this shit's charming um <laughs> like sort of drag and drop coding suite that they have here where every function is like a little character so you know you have your not guy and he's like a little stop sign a or timer, you have background like, music yeah counter yeah effect. like it's <laughs> yeah here they are here like it's so cool it's it's like really you know sort of like baby's first programming stuff it looks like with just like heaps and heaps of that nintendo charm and th i mean this i think will do such good things for game development in 10 20 years when kids who grew up playing this you know making shitty games here will you know have such a deep-rooted passion for that later in their life and i'm so excited for that mm -hmm. and also just like for me god i want to mess around to this like dreams <laughs> is really exciting to me but i would say this is almost more exciting given that um it, the way that they're presenting it here just the act of making games has so much charm and like fun built into it with just like i was saying all those little bits of nintendo juice and stuff like that um it's got you know sort of the music and feel from something like mario maker 2 which i'm a big fan of mm -hmm. um if you scroll back in the trailer if you oh. go back to that yeah. um it seems like there's also a pretty fucking huge where um where it zooms out and shows like the big thing of all the games um all the games or all the characters like the uh, all the games where you know it's like here's all the things you can make and it has tiles of like every... yeah oh. perfect um so you can see there's a pretty huge variety of stuff in here um like there's uh, like that sort of rhythm heaven like baseball game there's sort of like a survival horror the animal crossing in the, the bottom left. right <laughs> yeah it looks like it um <laughs> some sort of like puzzle game something that looks like cooking mama um a lot of sort of like warioware looking games yeah <laughs> like there's just such like visual and gameplay variety in all of these which really makes me happy because i'm, I'm glad it's not limited to just that and even things like sort of the like shitty pixel art in it and a lot of these gives me cozy like picto chat vibes that i really <laughs> like um like in that uh the top middle there with the little panda bear or even like the baseball sort oh, yeah. of rhythm heaven one yeah um yeah i'm just so excited about it the the thing i'm interested to see is if they will try to take a similar route to dreams in terms of asset creation where like will there oh, be a share with each suite? other 
Yeah, well, yeah, that and also just will there actually be a decent suite for making models and music and stuff like that? And yeah, being able to share that with people in terms of sharing, I would say almost certainly not because it's fucking Nintendo. They're always terrible about that, about that sort of thing. Um, but I, I want to see if it has like a decent music maker suite in here and stuff like that because mm. I think that'll make all this even more exciting. Um but yeah, I'm I'm so excited to get my hands on this. I'm even more excited to see what the community makes with it. Um, I'm it's thirty dollars, which for Nintendo is kind of huge. I was yeah. fully expecting it to be sixty. I didn't um, know that. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, part of me does wish it was free, just because it is such a creative tool. But at the, they need to make money. Like yeah, I, see, that's the I'm thing not, too. I I totally that. agree, but I think uh, I'm glad it's at least thirty because. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about this and Howard, like you said, I, you know, first thought I had, oh, this will be great for people who are young wanting to get into this stuff. And maybe in the future, like they'll be like, oh, I remember learning on this program or on this game mm-hmm. when I was a kid. I'm wondering like how many kids are going to have their, like how many parents are going to buy this for the kids though? I would hope a lot, but if it was free, mm-hmm. it would be like you said, a lot more accessible. Something that yeah, the kid, yeah. oh, I'm interested in this. Oh, my buddy over here, you know, Tommy is playing this game, and I can just go download it on my Switch, and I can try it out, and that's cool. I can play mm-hmm. Tommy's game, or you know, that kind of thing. It just it feels a lot more. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. I mean, that's that's part of why I love like what you're saying. That's part of why I think Scratch is so great. Is because yeah, it's it's a hundred percent free, and so. If you're a kid, you know, you mess around to Scratch in elementary school or whatever, you come home, you're like, hey, mom, I was doing this thing. It's pretty neat. Can mm-hmm. I download it on the family computer? They're like, oh, yeah, sure. And then sure enough, you're making Flappy Bird in Scratch or whatever. And it's, you know, it's dumb. It's shitty. It's made by an eight-year-old. But, like, you're, it's building that passion. And, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think if it's $30, it's a, maybe a bit of a harder sell on a parent. Um, or even for a kid, you know, you get one game a month. Am I really going to want this over Mario? Mm-hmm. Um but, but yeah, I still think $30, I'm, I'm really glad it's not full price, just in general. I, I think stuff like this should be more accessible. Um, but yeah, and also it mentioned early in the trailer, it seems to have sort of like virtual classes in the game, which I'm really excited about. Even like, I, I could see myself going through those just because they're made by Nintendo. Like, you know, they're made by some <laughs> yeah, of the you best gotta game designers out. in the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. so... I'm really excited to see what these really creative, charming classes made by, you know, world-class designers have to say. And I think that's super fascinating. I don't know. I This is just endlessly exciting to me. Like, the moment I saw this, I was just vibrating with excitement. What do you have to say, Nick? I, um, I was just thinking, as I do, you know, every day. <laughs> and I'm wondering when Epic is going to make something like this and implement it in mm-hmm. with Unreal Engine. Make their engine as accessible as possible to, you know, as young of an audience as possible. Like, I talked about it before, like, our, like their uh, lessons that they have are, that are available are awesome. And I was, like, getting into some of that stuff a while back. But, like, yeah, making this, making a game, which they could totally do, and have it implement with their engine and make it so that pe- like people who are just really young and interested could make something like that. I feel like that would be sweet. Maybe there is something like that. I just don't know, but... Um, I haven't seen. I, I haven't heard of anything. So I see you typing my away. Counter, <laughs> my counterpoint to that would be Fortnite Creative Mode, because I don't know if you've seen much about Fortnite Creative Mode, but it's kind of nuts. Like, because it is, I see people making like whole ass games in oh. um, Creative Mode. Like, like it's not like Minecraft Creative Mode where you can just you know build with the tools there. It is like there is sort of light programming. It's it's closer almost to like a gary's mod or roblox than oh, it is to okay. like a minecraft creative mode i think um and okay. yeah i mean i i totally see all sorts of cool shit made in that and i i do think that's what you're describing of that sort of for kids entry level um you know game development light thing and and that has fortnite attached to it so that's bigger than fucking anything anybody can put out there for getting kids excited i about guess that sort of thing i guess though what i'm thinking of is something that's more like you let's say you boot up Unreal Engine, okay? And mm-hmm. then up in the corner you click kid mode or something like that. Oh, <laughs> so much of the crap that you don't need to worry about right away just goes gone and it's really simple. Mm-hmm. Just here, click, drag this to there, do this thing, now try it. Click this, mm-hmm. go to here, try it. Like something like that. Very accessible. You're in it, you're ready to go right away. I don't mm-hmm. like you said, I don't know anything really to do with Fortnite, but I uh 
I think something that's separate from there would be better, and I think more an easier thing to talk about. I don't want to have to download Fortnite just so I can play this uh, program that I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I just I just think it would be cool, and I feel like Epic would be the kind of people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, we're already at like forty minutes or so. So, uh, do you want to give? <laughs> uh, zoom by these next things. Yeah, do you yeah. want to go on to your uh, what you're thinking of Apex Legends, uh, the legacy stuff? Yeah. Um. So yeah, new season of Apex Legends it out is out. Um, we've talked about it for like several episodes now. <laughs> this is the third one in a row. Um. But yeah, I'm this. I'm really fucking enjoying this season so far. Um. The new mode arena is definitely interesting i still think i prefer battle royale mm. um but it is a cool sort of way of switching things up i i just really find myself having to change my mindset of play when i'm playing it because yeah it is way more tactical um one of the things i really like about it from a game design perspective is the fact that it doesn't have any sort of like hard objectives in the way that something like csgo or valorant does where you know those you yeah are planting the bomb or disarming the bomb and those are very you know focused objectives in addition to you know wiping out the enemy team mm -hmm. but in here it is just wiping out the enemy team but there are things like i think there's two care packages that drop and you need to capture those like you don't need to to win the map or to win the match but like capturing those will give you huge advantage because you're getting crate weapons and those are a big deal when you're fighting opponents um so there's always, you know, that scramble to get to that and control it and stop the enemy from taking over that care package and getting what's in it. And that's super fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm finding a lot of the characters I usually play just don't work in this mode. Like their abilities are kind of useless. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit of a bit of a mental shift for me, for sure. Um, but I think with a if you're playing with two other people, so you have a full squad, yeah. and if you can kind of get in the zone for it, it's it's a lot of fun for sure. Um, and then the bigger new thing for me is uh, the new character, Valkyrie, who mm. is crazy fun. Like, she is so fun to play. Um, basically, she has, yeah, like a jetpack, so you can sort of hold down jump. Or you jump and then press jump again and hold it down, and then she'll either fly up or sort of hover. Um and you can't shoot while you're doing that. So basically you want to be really careful with it because you're a bit of a sitting target when you're in the air. Um, but it does allow you to reposition in kind of crazy places really, really quickly. Right. So it's an interesting tactical move. Um, and also one of the things I think is really fun about it is it can be used really aggressively where if you've been sort of whittling down an enemy to like shit, you know, they try to go behind cover and heal, you can just instantly zoom over to that cover, fly over it and start, you know, wrecking them, which is so fun. I, I wiped an entire squad by myself with that where they were kind of low and, you know, on wow. the defensive and tried to hide behind somewhere. And I just went up, shot like her rocket ability, which sort of stuns them. It doesn't do very much damage. And so with that, they're like, ah, like freaking out, scrambling. And I was able to sort of pick them off after that. And that, that <laughs> felt so satisfying nice. when I was able, you know, to use her abilities the way that they're intended. Um, but yeah, she definitely is fairly situational. She's kind of hard to get used to. But now that I've started to really figure out her abilities, she's just so fun and so satisfying to use. Um, I'm probably going to leave it at that because <laughs> we are pretty late on time. Nick, do you have anything to say? No, I uh, I don't. <laughs> if, All right. if you want to go right into the next topic, because you, yeah, you added these couple uh, notes and know a lot more about them. Yeah, yeah. So, the, yeah, the next one is one that I do think is very interesting, which Same. is... Um, the oh, what's it called a, a new judgment game got announced from the yakuza team um which yeah judgment is a spin-off game of that if you were not aware um and i think it's called like before judgment or something i forget i wish i knew um but basically what came out of that announcement is the fact that um the developers stated that judgment lost is lost judgment lost judgment um and Judgment is basically their action game franchise now. And Yakuza, from here on out, will continue to be a turn-based RPG. Which, personally, I'm actually really excited about. Um, I, I'm i glad that that old style of game is staying with Judgment. But at the same time, I, as I talked about in this show with Like a Dragon, I think there is a lot of improvement to be had with Yakuza's turn-based system. Um but 
I think is a really, really, really strong core. And so I think a sequel to Like a Dragon, you know, using Ichiban, because I think he's a fucking amazing character, mm. um, like using that character, using what they build up in that, and then really improving, taking the feedback from that game and putting it into a sequel, I think it will be amazing. Like, I think it really, it could be 100% like a Persona 5 level RPG. That's and, awesome. Like, in that terms of, yeah. Because um, Like a Dragon, I think, was really close I think the big things were the the combat balance was just really off. Like enemies often had way too much HP. Um, I thought sometimes it was way too hard. Sometimes it was way too easy. Like that, just the balancing was the main thing for me. But I think if they really fine tune that and make that a little bit more fun, make the job system a little bit more dynamic, um, maybe make character roles a little bit stronger, it could be just stupid fun. And I'm so excited to see what they do next with that. Yeah, that's still a game like 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 a dragon is one that I still have on my list, and I'm totally gonna play it at some point. But yeah, mm-hmm. I just never bought, and uh, I just don't. I, is it on PC? I don't actually yes. know. Okay, I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. Maybe. I'm excited to try out the turn based system because I did like the uh, more action focused one. But I find mm-hmm. even with like the humor in Yakuza that I really enjoy with some of those like sp- like flashy moves that you'd get in the other ones that I played. Mm-hmm. Like I could totally picture those having more of a spotlight, more like situations that could be really fun to see mm-hmm. when you're doing a turn-based game so. mm-hmm. yeah and and at the same time like as much as i'm talking about how much i love the turn-based i agree i i still really really love the action type thing and so if the series was just only turn-based from now i think there would be that excitement but there would also i definitely think be a level of like eh, well, that kind of sucks mm-hmm. like i i miss those old style of games and so be having that be alive you know with um judgment which i haven't played and i really really need to because it seems like it's super up my alley um but having it be alive in there does fill me with hope and i think that this franchise is going really really great places awesome um so yeah with that if do you have anything more to say on that uh no no just that i really want to play it uh like a dragon (laughs) still (laughs) All right, then, so with the final one, I do want to talk about my my Retroid Pocket 2, um, which is, if you're not familiar, it's essentially a Android-based emulation handheld made by Retroid. Um, it was around 80 US dollars, 85 US dollars, which I think is a really good price. Um, it's powerful enough to emulate basically, I mean, from like, you know, Atari and arcades up to either the ps1 or the psp Mm. um and i think that's a really good range especially for what this is in the price point um and yeah i've so i have mostly been playing like snes and gba games on it so far um but my experience with it has been i don't know how to describe it basically if you're (laughs) all right next topic buy this (laughs) if (laughs) If you, if you buy this and you're expecting to just plug it in and start playing games, you're going to have a really fucking bad time. Like, you are going to hate this thing. Um, and I, But at the same time, I think that's okay because I definitely don't think that that's what this device is for. It, I think it definitely is meant to be something that you sort of tinker with and mod and, you know, have fun with in that sense. Less even the sense of actually playing games on it, which mm. was kind of what I was looking for with it. I was looking for a project, so... I mean, booting it up uh, on its base, it runs Android 6. Point, I think just 6.0, Android 6. Um, or you can switch to their Retroid OS, which I fucking hated. I didn't want to deal with that, um, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. I, I thought it was kind of crappy. Um, and Android 6 is just old and slow and clunky, so I didn't really want to deal with that either. And one of my big... It's hard to say complaints because it is $80, but it doesn't have a touchscreen, which for an Android-based device is kind of hard because Android is built around touchscreen. So it has, like, a mouse mode that you can switch to where you basically, you know, click, use it like a mouse and you just move the cursor with your joystick. And that Mm -hmm. obviously doesn't feel amazing. Um, So with that, I looked around because I remember seeing hints at, like, other OSs that you could download for it. And, yeah, the community on this thing is amazing. So I installed Lineage OS on it, which was a something that is built for this device specifically. It's built to be used with a D-pad and all those things. And that is, a, I would say, intermediate 
technically advanced thing. So if you are familiar with computers, you probably won't have too much of an issue. But the fact that I'm having to format this thing and install a new OS on it to play, you know, it goes to what I was saying of it. It, mm -hmm. it isn't a device for everybody. It is a project. Um, but I mean, after doing that, you know, I have started really working on getting retro work working, getting dig like a front end. So it all looks really good and feels really smooth. Um, lineage is amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. It's so snappy. It feels so good to use, which is not something I would say about Android six. Um, but with all that, like now that I've done that, I've been playing earthbound on it. Um, I've been playing some Tetris stuff like that. It is a really, really nice device to use. Um, in terms of the hardware itself, like with, you know, the buttons and everything on it, um, I would say it does feel pretty solid. I really like the size and sort of the build of it. It's, it's kind of thick. I'll bring it to the camera. Um, like I would say it's a little bit thicker than a switch. Um, but I like that. Like it feels definitely nicer to hold than even my switch. I would say, mm -hmm. um, with a similar form factor, um, the one hardware complaint I have of it is some of the buttons. And I'll give you just like a sound demonstration. This is me just tapping the D-pad. I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it. Like I'm not pressing the D-pad. I'm just tapping it. Like that's just sort of the sound of the plastic rattling, which I'm really not a fan of. Like this thing, if I shake it, it does kind of have a rattle to it, which is unfortunate. Um, but other than that, like the buttons still feel good to use. I just don't like when things rattle. My other... Big, big complaint, this is probably the worst thing about this device, is the fact that the right stick, for some reason, is not an actual, like, you know, this is a thumbstick. This is one of those shitty, like, 3DS sort of low-profile, like, oh, digital no. sticks. Oh, no, I don't like those. <laughs> the ones that just sort of slide around. Yeah, and this one feels especially crappy, I would say. Um, the good news is this is a retro device. It, like again going up to ps1 so virtually no games actually use that stick i was gonna say um, that i've been playing at least so i kind of haven't had to touch it at all i think that's why they made it such a cheap crappy thing is because i like this is kind of a throwaway we don't need to put much effort into this and you know to keep that under a hundred dollars price point um so i get it i just wish it was nicer um but yeah i mean i'd say if you're into playing older games and you want something on the go and you're okay with putting in that effort to really make it feel good. And I definitely think like I actively wanted something I had to put effort into because it is really, whoa, voice crack. Um, it is really satisfying getting this thing working exactly how you want it. It really feels like your device. And I, I think that's a pretty special experience with it. Um, but yeah, I would recommend it to a very specific audience, I would say. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it sounds fun for that particular audience that you're talking about. <laughs> well, let's move on. We have uh, our favorite 50 games of all time, number 36 to go on and talk about. Um, since you were going on for a while there, I'll let you have your water, take a breather. I'll jump into mine. So my 36, my number 36 favorite game of all time. Um, I'm sure it's on a lot of people's list, but Mario Galaxy 2. Ooh. And I'm going to say right now, Mario Galaxy 1 is not on my list. And uh, that's because Ooh. I do feel like this one is better. And I feel like, and, and really just, I don't have like any factual reason other than I know I had more fun with it. Um, I had a lot more fun with the game and it's also the only one I kept and I didn't sell. So, I mean, that says a lot too. Like I actually have the disc still here and um, I don't have the, the, the original Mario Galaxy disc anymore. And I'll only hold on to physical media if it's something that I really, really care about. So um, I'm re looking now at my list as it gets smaller and like, holy cow, there's a, I have the physical copy of a lot of this stuff. There's still, there obviously is still stuff that I don't, but, but yeah, we're getting into some of my really good favorite ones here. Um, Mario Galaxy 2 though, I mean, you have Yoshi. That's a big plus. I mean, I love Yoshi and uh you, and be able to use him in different ways in the game. Use him to like swing across different like locations with the tongue and and uh, eat enemies and stuff. I love having Yoshi in a Mario game. I feel like Mario without Yoshi just doesn't feel right anymore. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't really have. I don't feel like I need to go into it too much. Everyone knows what Mario is. Mar a lot of people know what Mario Galaxy is. Just great levels, great design. I I have so much fun with the gravity and the different ways they have that you know that system working. 
fun powers with like the little cloud and bumblebee suits and I, I just have a good time with that game every time. I could always jump into a random level whenever and always have fun. Have a smile on my face. What's your uh, number 36 game? Uh, first of all, yeah, that's awesome. I can't remember if I've played Mario Galaxy 2 or not. And this is really strange to me because, like, occasionally I'll hear someone mention something from Mario Galaxy 2. I'm hmm. like, yeah, I played that. But at the same time, I can never remember owning a copy of Mario Galaxy 2. I feel like I only owned one. So I don't know if I just like am mixing memories up or something. <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, Mario so Galaxy similar love, it's... in look and play style, yeah, right? Yeah. So. yeah, but Mario Galaxy, I would say, um, is probably my favorite of what Mario has done. Of the main of the mainline games, mm -hmm. Mario Maker is probably my favorite of the games with Mario attached right. to it. But um, Mario Galaxy is, yeah, I mean, from just like the, the completely taking away what you're saying about the level design and the platforming and stuff, like just the music and the vibe and the yeah. art. And yeah, the music is so is good, so stunning. Yeah, and especially on the Wii, which is essentially just a souped up gamecube you know like <laughs> yeah. having the game come out when it did, you know, amongst actual HD consoles and still look that good is incredible um but yeah i think that's a really solid pick um for me my number 36 is a very topical pick and that is apex legends um never heard of it <laughs> which <laughs> um yeah I, I it's battle royale i think is one of my favorite like new genres i would say i would consider battle royale a genre and this is oh yeah absolutely the the peak of that I think it, it takes what makes Battle Royales fun, you know, the randomness, the skill, the tension, um, the chaos of it, and really refines it in the way that is the most fun, to me at least, mm -hmm. um, where there, the abilities in it, I think if you trust the right amount of control, while also, oof, again, God, my voice, um, while also just adding the right amount of chaos in fights, you know, getting jumped by someone and ha suddenly, like, fucking rockets coming down, <laughs> it's nuts, you know, you're getting in cover. Um, and the characters are also strong, too, like, they're also likable and fun to be around in here. Um, and it's also just, like, fucking innovative, and I think it maybe doesn't get enough credit for that, but... It has introduced several concepts that I am already seeing in a lot of games. Um, like the most obvious being the ping system, which, uh, or just, you know, earlier this week playing uh, Second Extinction, just, it basically just had Apex's ping system ripped right out of it into this game. And I've gotten to the point where I feel like every multiplayer game should have Apex's ping system ripped right out of it. Like it's so brilliant and such an easy way for you to communicate. I totally what you want agree. Without ever having to type or use your voice or anything, and especially in um, a, a community, you know, video games as a whole is a community that is not the most accepting. And I've often like I've I've had female friends who talk about that, and they they just don't use voice chat because they don't want to deal with it. And it's yeah. sad that that's a thing, totally. but it's also good to see games like Apex that can give you a perfectly viable way to play without ever having to truly interact with anybody or even if you're just shy like mm -hmm. i don't like talking on mics with random people usually um but i can play with randos and communicate perfectly what i want to them the entire game and yeah. that's such a brilliant thing um i could probably talk for an hour on the brilliance of the game design behind the ping system <laughs> but i will yeah, not it was, it's like um, it literally was game changing for like the like uh, the industry in my opinion you had so many, yeah. like even Borderlands 3 added a ping system, and I yeah, totally yeah. believe it's because of that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's awesome. And other than that, like, it's respawned. The shooting feels great. The movement feels fucking amazing. Like, mm -hmm. the, it has the best slide in any shooter I've played. Easy, like, not even close to there being competition, except for maybe Titanfall 2, <laughs> which is basically the same slide. <laughs> um, but... I don't know. It's it's just such a well refined, tight game mm -hmm. that it's it's really easy to like. That's about all I have to say. Awesome. No, great pick. Great pick. Um so with that guys, uh we're not doing a game club game this week. Uh we've decided to take a week off. Um personally for myself, you know, with Horizon and Resident Evil 8, I'm like, I gotta that's all 
that's all of my spare time I'm playing those. So uh, we'll have an update for the week after uh, once we like firm it up. We have a few ideas in mind, but uh, we'll we'll make that clear next week. So mm-hmm. game club taking a break, um, and uh, just want to take this time to just say uh, remind everybody. There will be videos popping up pretty shortly and ideally regularly um, of just me and Taylor playing through Resident Evil 8. We will be have I'll be just putting together the highlights, some of the most interesting parts and sometimes contextual parts to kind of help sp- like span. I'm over here and all of a sudden now I'm over in another spot just to kind of piece that together. But really trying to do about 20 minute episodes um, just so that they're not too, too long. And uh, yeah, so everyone can look forward to that coming out on the channel. Ziggy, do you have anything to plug before we end this here? No, I don't think so. Not at the moment, no. Yeah. Well, if you have uh, made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I really do appreciate it. And um, you guys can f- listen to this if you want on podcast services everywhere. And uh, with that, we'll say goodbye and see you all next week. Yeah, Bye. see ya.